Hello and welcome to the PTV VSIM webinar Simulation of Airport Operations. Today you will learn about how PTV VSIM and WISWOG help answering questions of the manifold mobility aspects at airports. While the concepts and examples shown in this webinar directly relate to airports, they can easily be adapted to other use cases such as transportation hubs, railway stations, sports facilities or even trade fairs. What you see here is a VISIM simulation of the airport of Stuttgart in Germany. Depending on the role you take, you may have a different focus. Yet, it is important to have a model that includes all mobility aspects to enable all the different stakeholders to answer their questions. For example, as a passenger you may ask, how do I get to the terminal? When arriving by train, how long does it take to get to check-in or security? Or by private vehicle, do I find a place to drop off? From the airport operator point of view, what about capacity if two trains arrive simultaneously? Or what happens if they must be evacuated through the terminal building? What is the best way to operate the taxi drop-off and pick-up areas? Will the proposed redesign of our forecourt really reduce congestion? How long will queues extend with new security check measures being active? How will changes in flight schedule affect traffic congestion both on the forecourt and the airside? And can we keep our guaranteed connection times? The project behind this simulation was to show the effects of evacuating trains through the terminal building. Another application is to test new design layouts of the forecourt. But Stuttgart Airport is just one example. Many consultancies and airport authorities around the world, such as Changi Airport Singapore or Dubai Airports, use PTV VSIM and WISWALK. In the next 45 minutes, I will show you several aspects of how PTV VSIM and WISWALK supports landside, in terminal and airside operations. I am Sven Beller, Senior Technical Product Manager and Modeling Expert for PTV VSIM and WISWALK at PTV Headquarters here in Karlsruhe in Germany. Before we start, let me give you some technical information about the webinar. While the microphones of the attendees are muted, you can contribute by posting comments and questions via the questions window. My colleague Jochen Lohmiller, who is manager for microscopic simulation also here at PTB headquarters, will reply to you via the questions window during the webinar as soon as possible. After the webinar, we both will be around for some time to answer your questions too. Now, for those of you that are not so familiar with the difference between PTV VISIM and WISBOG, here's a short summary. Both WISIM and WISBOG share the same software base. WISBOG is dedicated to applications which focus on pedestrians only, without any vehicle movements. And it uses an area-based movement model, the so-called social force model. On the other hand, VISIM originates from micro-simulating road and light rail traffic, both in urban and interurban context. Now you could say, wait a minute, most times it's not just the one or the other, but a combination of both, like at intersections or with public transport. You're very right. Therefore, as soon as combinations of both worlds are to be examined, PTV VSIM and WISBOG together provide a single seamless application to simulate almost all kinds of human and autonomous mobility. Let's start now with the land side of an airport. This VSIM network shows an example of a terminal forecourt also called the land side or curbside of an airport. Here I would like to show you various components that are relevant for simulation 
and thus can be modeled in VSIM. First of all, of course, the road network, which is the base of all the vehicular movements. Then the vehicle demand, which can be different for time of day and, of course, for the different vehicle types. The various vehicle types are also simulated with different dimensions of the vehicles as well as different routing depending on where they are allowed to go on the airport forecourt. Then there is the curbside drop-off and pick-up and the short and long stay parking which can be overlapping or can have like the long stay car park usually has a separate entry and exit. Here we have also the public and shuttle bus areas, the public transport stops as well as curbside locations. We can also model PRT systems in VSIM. PRT stands for Personal Rapid Transit and such a system is for example implemented at London Heathrow Airport. Then of course we also can and need to model the passenger walkways as they are a hindrance for the vehicular traffic especially when it comes to the crossings. And here there is another speciality called crossing guards. In the field these could be people but it could also be a signal control. In VISIM we model it as a signal control because the effect will be the same and I will show you in more detail uh, later on how we model that. Then there is also the links to any railway or metro trains that can be modeled here as well as the trains as well. You could also model the people movers inside the terminal and there is also the taxi rank operations so you can have different ways to operate taxi rank and see what the effect will be on the queues. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to go through each of these in detail, but I've picked two items where I'd like to share some more. This is the crossing guards and the taxi rank. Crossing guards simply secure the pedestrian crossing to vehicular traffic and uh, in peak hours they make sure that there is not too much congestion for the vehicular traffic. In VISIM we model it by means of a VAP signal controller, VAP stands for Vehicle Actuated Programming, and allows for a detector-based activation of this signal. So it is not a fixed time, but it is actually demand-driven. You see here in the middle a small control logic that controls this signal. Detectors check for occupied time, and after a defined time, the signals block passengers so the vehicular queues can be cleared. There are different conditions for pedestrians as well as to how long the vehicles can freely flow so that pedestrians will not be blocked too long. By the way, if you wonder what the longer pedestrians here are, these are pedestrians with baggage carts. And in this example, the pedestrians are modeled lane-based not area-based, because with the lane-based behavior we can model the baggage cards much better. The next example I will quickly show you is the taxi rank for pickup. Here we use um, several lanes, you see four lanes of taxis and each lane has a capacity of five up to six taxis that can be filled simultaneously. These are the objects the taxi rank consists of. We have the S-shaped queue, which is read additionally from a VISIM installation example. We have one link per taxi lane. There is a stop sign for every single service point. This is where the passengers can board. Partial routes that direct the taxis to the correct lane and a signal head for the staging area. This is where the taxis wait once the rank is full. Here you can see now the simulation running. The passenger assignment is done 
in a way that no passenger visually walks to a taxi, but it is still accurate as the taxi dwell time increases with the distance a passenger would have to walk. The number of passengers per taxi is determined by the taxi occupancy minus the driver. We can visualize that here. So this is the number of passengers currently inside the taxi. A script generates the other network objects such as detectors upon simulation start and controls the operation. It also provides status information during the simulation both for each lane and for each taxi. So for example down here in each lane you see the number of taxis that are currently approaching this lane, the number of taxis that are currently inside the lane and the number of service points that are currently available. The status state for each lane is contained here. So you see vehicles are currently exiting. That means no further taxis can enter because there's still one taxi to be filled first. And the state of the passengers is recorded here. And for each of the taxis you can see here on the left hand side in the quick view the current status, all passengers have arrived, the vehicle is ready to leave and is leaving just now. And as soon as vehicles arrive, you will see that they are available for boarding, waiting for passengers, then the passengers will board eventually until they are full. I've enhanced the example now to include also the walkways for the passengers. The taxis are color-coded as before to show their state. For example, green means vacant, blue that all passengers are on their way, and yellow that the taxi is ready to leave. But here I would like to point out another important aspect of a taxi rank, no matter if the passenger walkways are modeled or not. The operation mode. It has an impact on the number of taxis that can be served in one hour and thus how long the passengers need to wait. In the Visim example, the operation mode can be changed either manually by changing a signal program or automatically by a VIP type signal controller. Here you see the operation by lane. Each lane is filled independently of the others and as soon as a lane is empty the next taxis arrive. In contrast to that, this mode is by position. So at first all taxis in the front are filled, then those at second position and so on. While at first glance this looks more efficient, you will see by the performance indicators that it is not. Less passengers were served during the same time. And here you see the reason why. Only after the taxis of the last position left, new taxis can enter. So there is more lost time than in the example before. Taking this even further, there is the platoon operation mode. It means that first all entering taxis must stand still before the first passengers make their way to them and only if the last passenger arrived and the taxi is ready to leave, then all the taxis are allowed to do so. While this certainly is the safest way for passengers, it is more inefficient in terms of capacity. What exactly the differences are, you can find out using the simulation. The taxi rank example without the walkways, but including the various operation modes, is part of the package that comes with the Visim Landside Demand Generator that I will show you next. The Landside Demand Generator is an add-on module for PTV Visim that provides a comprehensive tool for generating vehicular and passenger demand from a flight schedule. The resulting demand is written to a suitable Visim network 
which then allow simulating the traffic at an airport forecourt. And in addition to the flight schedule, other relevant data such as passenger arrival time patterns, seat shares, curbside waiting time patterns, etc. are considered during the generation process. With a demand generator it is very easy for you to change or to test different flight schedules regarding their effects on the forecourt traffic as it is only one action to generate the new demand. And traffic that is not directly related to a flight schedule, the so-called background traffic, can be defined as well. Next I will show you how the demand generation works. We start with the flight schedule and the demand generator identifies relevant flights by the time window that you have defined. Then the time profiles are applied to the demand. Time profiles means that um, this is the time pedestrians arrive at the airport before their flight. For each different travel class this can be different, so on the top, the blue one, you see it's a shorter arrival time pattern. This is for first class passengers, the red one is business class and the black one economy. Once these time profiles have been applied, as a result you get the number of passengers per simulation time interval, also different by the travel class. Now. These passengers obviously don't arrive by foot on the airport, so we need to distribute them to transport. So we have the different um, mode splits applied here. And also, as you can see the red lines in the background, the occupancy profiles. And finally, we get the number of vehicles per mode and per simulation interval that will be fed into the VSIM network to arrive at the airport forecourt. And the occupancy of each vehicle is according to the number of passengers that has been calculated before. How to use the demand generator? Well, as you've seen, the flight schedule and the other data has been defined as well as the VSIM network. Then with the set time ranges that you've defined, the demand is calculated with resulting the number of vehicles per mode and per time interval, just as you have seen on the slide before. Here you can already loop back to identify the peak period which you are interested in simulating. The next step is then to update the VSIM file, send all this demand to VSIM and then the demand generator has finished its work and you can continue, run the simulation and get some results directly in VSIM. Finally, these results can lead to applying some changes or also computing different scenarios. So you loop back and start the process again. What are the components? Well, First of all, there's a spreadsheet application powered by Excel, which contains spreadsheets, for example, for the flight schedule and also for the various data that feeds um, into the demand generator. That's quite a lot of data that you can provide. And also, on the other side, there is the VSIM network that is necessary. And all the data that is possible to be defined in VSIM is defined directly in VSIM. The demand generator will draw from the VSIM network all this data that you have defined there. And then finally there is a small control dialog that controls the entire process. The flight schedule for example could look like this. There are a few columns that are necessary for the demand generator to function correctly. Other columns are just optional. In the resulting VSIM simulation, you can now see various things. So all the vehicle movements are based on the flight schedule. In addition, there is, it is also possible to have some background traffic that is not directly related to the flight schedule. There are user-defined and mode-specific routes. You have custom drop-off and pick-up locations. 
These are modeled by the attraction value of parking lots. There is a custom drop of time distribution and a rate of how many passengers carry baggage. According to that, passengers are generated on the curb with or without baggage cart. I will also quickly like to show you what output is in the Excel spreadsheet. So here the blue line is the total number of passengers that has been computed. The total vehicles is shown in red and it is only computed for the time interval that you have defined to be relevant for the simulation. Some additional validation checks are provided as well. Relevant flights per time interval and the vehicle and the passenger demand. Also the counts on inbound links, the number of vehicles and passengers, so that you can check them against the demand if all the vehicles and passengers really arrived in the network. And not only at the start of the network, but also at the drop-off position and at the terminal door. So you can see in the table above there are four different columns all showing now the same values. This is how it should be. The first one is the demand, the second at the location where they set into the network, the third one where they drop off and the fourth one at the terminal door. And because numbers are not always so easy to compare, this is also provided as a chart. After the simulation it should look like this. Some more validations are regarding the passenger travel time and showing late passengers even with the maximum time they have used. In the micro simulation of course all standard evaluations are available as well but there are some additional evaluations like the passenger waiting time at the taxi rank or the curbside utilization. As well you will have the multimodal traffic simulation with the 3D visualization and, not to forget, for each passenger there is also the flight number associated with it. So that's it for the land side and let's continue now with the terminal simulation. Among typical fields of application inside a terminal building are the following processes. Check-in, immigration, security check, boarding and also shopping. The relevant components include construction elements such as stairs, escalators, moving walkways and elevators, as well as people movers. When it comes to simulating the passenger flows inside the terminal, PTV VisWalk is used for pedestrian and VisIM for vehicular movements such as people movers. Besides modeling the typical construction elements, it is crucial that the simulation can direct the passengers to various processes based on their properties. Such could be personal properties like gender, nationality, passport type, land transport mode, travel class like first business and economy, the check-in type, number of bags and the security category. Flight-related properties could include the flight number, the airline code, scheduled time both for arrivals or departure, terminal concourse, the gate number and many more. To accommodate these, you can define an unlimited number of attributes that are customized according to your requirements. These are the so-called user-defined attributes. For replicating airport processes, VisSim and VisWalk provide features that were implemented in response to airport customers. And among these are attribute decisions and formula-based routing. These are available both for pedestrian and vehicular movements. Attribute decisions comfortably allow for setting values for attributes like, for example, the personal properties mentioned before, anywhere in your network. This can either be a fixed or a random value taken from a distribution. 
Then routing through the terminal can be based on any combination of attribute values by means of formula-based routing. This results in individual and tailored passengers' paths. Formula-based routing is available both for static and partial routes and the routes can also be nested as well as combined with fixed route proportions. Now, many of the tasks on a passenger's journey through an airport are not dedicated to airport terminals, but will also appear in other contexts, for example train stations or sport venues. Hence, you don't need to model every component from scratch, but can utilize the example library of Viswalk that comes with every installation, or the library of your projects. For this webinar we've chosen a security check as a use case because it is one of the most complex processes on the passenger side of an airport and the technique shown here can be adapted to other processes as well. We start with a very simple model and I show you in this walk how to improve it. This leads us to an advanced version and then finally I show you some model details of a high-end version. This is a very simple example of a security check area. There is a pedestrian input here and a single static route leading over a queuing area. So you see it's defined as a queue. Also there is a time distribution assigned to this area. And um, if we consider now we have eight lanes of security check but here in the model there is only one area and for every lane we would have two minutes as an average waiting time. So we divide the two minutes by eight lines, which results in 15 seconds in total. This is the time distribution that I have assigned here. So let's see the simulation. Of course, there is one queue and the outcome of it is that every passenger waits for about 15 seconds so the total number in the end will be co correct but of course um, as we define only one lane the queue will not be really correct therefore let's change this and enhance the example a little bit what I will do now is I will add one waiting area for each lane and a central area from which these lanes will be fed. So first I simply move this central queue a little bit up and then I duplicate this one. Um, before I duplicate this for e every in each lane let's change the security check time distribution to 120 and then I can duplicate using control and using the shift button keeps them all inside the same horizontal position. Okay, to make use of each of these waiting areas now I define an additional partial route on this area here and I choose service point selection and let's say at each lane there can be five people so only continue if there are four people or less queuing there. The end of it must be on the same area as the static route for the partial route to take effect. And of course we need to have eight one of them. One for each waiting area.
So in total, you see, we have now defined eight partial roots. Before we start the simulation, I need to make sure that for the central queue, there is no time distribution defined. Otherwise, they would wait too long there. Just the queue is important. So I will start the simulation. You see now it looks much better. We have a distribution to all the different queues and as soon as each of the queues has five people they will actually wait at the central queue. Typically the central queue is not just like a straight or almost straight queue as here but more like an S-shaped queue. So this is the next thing I will show you. Therefore, I will open another Wisim instance and in the new Wisim instance I open an example that is already existing. The example I mean is an example with an S-shaped queue. It is contained in the training examples that comes with your Wisim installation under pedestrians, queuing, SQ with shortcuts and here I choose the small version. So let's see what this is all about. You see the pedestrians are queuing here in an S-shaped queue. As long as there is only a few of them, they can use the shortcuts and the shortcuts are closed, like you can see here, with a belt once the uh, number increases. We would like to use this example now for our security check. Therefore, I will copy a few network objects from my existing network and paste it here in the example network. So I move it like here. I zoom in a little bit and switch to wireframe mode so that you can see the structure here. I just need to make sure that the original static root will continue to the end right here and that the intermediate point will actually be moved to my queuing area, to the central one. We can get rid of these three small areas here and then I move my waiting area here. That wasn't too difficult, was it? So now let's see if we made everything correct. I zoom out and start the simulation. So it seems to work quite good. You see also here that if the queues have five persons, then the central queue closes. You can also watch that in 3D. And there we go. So you see now with only a few clicks you already have quite a sophisticated model taking one of our um, distributed examples and combining it with your already prepared network.
Before I continue with the advanced version, I would like to show you some components of the S-shaped queues as they are contained in the Visim installation. So here we use also partial routes with formula-based routing to ensure that pedestrians walk on the quickest way to the end of the queue, but uh, if there is too many pedestrians then the shortcuts have to be closed. Priority rules are used here to prevent passengers from pulling through the shortcut. We use area behavior types to um, control the distance between the passengers. This can be enhanced also if you have special conditions like you need to have a, a certain distance between pedestrians. And the user-defined attributes are used to control the S-shaped queue. The visualization, we use static objects like railings and it is also a static object, the belt, but uh, we control it via a small script to be scaled to normal or scaled to minimize so that you don't see it. This example is contained in the VisimX installation in the directory that you can see here. So for the advanced example, we will actually continue from what you have seen before. The difference is that we now not only have the eight different lanes, but for each lane, three sections where the passengers need to wait. The first section that we have already modeled is the backdrop. Then there is the body scan, which is combined, one body scan for two lanes. And finally, there's the back pickup at the end. And of course, you need to make sure that passengers pick up their own bags. So after the body scan, we need to make sure that the passengers will go back to the correct lane. Now, the high-end version includes even more stuff. So you see that all the sections of the security check are explicitly modeled. There is a simulation of not only the passenger, but also of the bag flow. There is a 3D visualization that you can see a screenshot of it here. And some scripting is included to make it all work and to synchronize the passenger and bag flows. Also, this example is included in your Visim installation at the location you see here. So let's now have a look at how the passengers and bags are processed and how they are interlocking. First of all, passengers queue until there is an empty tray where they can drop off their bag or personal item. Then the personal item is in the tray and they continue to wait in front of the body scanner. The body scanner takes some time. Afterwards, there might be an additional body check, a personal body check. And then the passenger continues to pick up his or her bag or personal item. And here we have the split again into the two lanes. And the tray in the meantime is being scanned and then eventually arrives at the pickup point. So the bag personal item can be picked up and the tray is empty again and can be reused for the next process. We use several waiting areas with various time distributions for each of the processes. Then there are two signals. The upper one ensures that the passenger drops the bag only if an empty tray is available. And the lower one we use for a specific combination with a formula root I will explain later. The next is partial routes. This is to ensure that the passengers proceed only if the previous passenger has left. And here um, it keeps the passenger on the correct lane and allows body scanner to be used for both lanes. Then there is also formula routes. Formula routes are used for the manual body check to ensure that it is optional, not everyone needs to be checked, and that only one passenger is being checked at a time. Now further down here we have another 
formula root that makes the passenger wait for the correct tray to arrive. Why correct tray? Well, because of the manual body check there could be a change in sequence of the passengers and we need to ensure that the passenger picks up his personal item. In this example that you can see here, the man in the blue suit was um, being checked manually and the lady in the white shirt, she's waiting until her bag arrives. Now, uh, because she was there earlier, we didn't let her proceed to the pickup point because it is not yet her personal item that's coming. So we sent her to an intermediate point which is blocked by a red signal and the formula route is only then switched for her um, pickup position if her tray arrives. And this is done by looking into the tray for the ID of the passenger that we have stored at the drop-off position. There's also a variation of waiting times depending on the number of trays. So we have different pick-up points and the formula route takes the passenger to the correct one. The area behavior has also been adapted. There is less noise and slower speeds. And you have seen that before. We also use a 3D passenger model that represents if it has a backpack or briefcase with him or not. This is done by changing the pedestrian type. A script allows for starting the drop-off, which is the signal on the top, and uh, also the drop-off and pick-up bag to be visualized in 3D. Now, on the other hand, we have the bags and personal item processes. The trays we model simply as vehicles, slow moving vehicles. So the vehicle link is the conveyor for the trays. These vehicles are generated by script because they are depending on if there is a passenger dropping off his luggage or not. And the user attribute passenger number is used for identification so that at pickup the passenger picks up only his or her personal item. Also here we have a 3D representation of the trays filled with different content. So it's either empty, there is a backpack, a briefcase or a personal item. And the color is defined by Visim associated with the color of the pedestrian. On the conveyor there are some stop signs. So at first to wait until the drop-off is completed, then inside the baggage scanner and finally at pick-up. And these stop signs are um, also controlled by a script, um, at least at the beginning and at the end, as well as the assignment of the passenger number to the tray and the change of the 3D state. So finally you have a network like this and to see how each passenger follows its path through security and waits eventually for picking up. There are also some extensions possible. For example, you could add a separate section for bag investigation, which is typically there at an airport. You could prevent passengers from entering the body scanner if the manual scan is occupied. And um, as you can already see here, you can use a dedicated lane for business or crew purposes. That's it for the simulation inside the terminal. Before we close this webinar, let me give you a brief introduction to airsight simulation. Besides the road and aircraft infrastructure, the airsight requires for many different vehicle types with their specific properties such as dimensions, weight, capacity, etc. As vehicle movements are mainly triggered by aircraft arrivals and departures, it is required that they can be controlled by a dispositioning system. The simulation you see here is a simplified example to show the principle of modeling airside traffic with VISIM. Therefore, only a few types of aircraft, GSE and other vehicles are shown. 
Depending on aircraft type, the required number of vehicles is called upon a certain time ahead of the estimated on-block time. Then, either vehicles nearby that are available and or vehicles from a staging area are called to the arrival gate. This is done by VIP, which controls signals to release vehicles from the staging area. Once the aircraft is on block, GSE approach the aircraft to do their job. When finished, they continue to their next task, for example, to the baggage handling area where arriving baggage is unloaded, or to another gate, or back to the staging area. The aircraft stands are modeled with VISIM parking lots, which offers an easy way to model the incoming movement, dwell times, and the pushback. The big advantage of VISIM is its scientifically approved car following model along with a wide flexibility of vehicle types and dimensions so that they can exactly replicate the conditions on the airfield. Furthermore, all network objects required to build the airside infrastructure can be used out of the box, for example controlling the right of way both with and without signals. There are various ways to control the vehicle movements in VISIM. For simulation of a static flight schedule, vehicles can be modeled on public transport lines with intermediate stops. The more flexible approach is to assign vehicles to their next destination, for example triggered by an air arriving aircraft. The destination is written to a user-defined attribute and partial routes are used to automatically guide vehicles according to their destination and also according to their dimensions to consider height restrictions, for example. That's it for now on the air side. Surely there are many more aspects which unfortunately we cannot deal with in detail due to time restrictions. Let me wrap up quickly what you've seen today. First, I showed you relevant components of a terminal land site and by means of two examples how to model them in VISIM. Then I introduced you to the VISIM land site demand generator. For the simulation in the terminal you learned about the various processes and passengers' properties. For the example security check you could see how quickly a network can be compiled with components from the example library and also what options there are for a high-end simulation with many details. Finally, I introduced you to the capabilities of VISIM for modeling the air site. Before we close, I'd like to point you to our YouTube channel where you find several of the videos shown in this webinar. Others will follow in the future and there are numerous videos of other VISIM applications. You can find them by searching YouTube for VISIM simulation or simply by going to the PTV Vision channel youtube.com slash PTV Vision. We are now at the end of this webinar. Should you have any more questions, you can still ask us using the questions window. Jochen and I will stay online for a few more minutes and reply to you. Thank you for your interest in microsimulation and for watching our webinar. Have fun modeling with PTV Visim and Wiswalk. All the best and take care.